How many remember Ivisu jeans? The Japanese denim brand became known for its pristinely crafted denim and now infamous squiggly line seagull logo, both of which have littered the fashion history books over the years. Ensuring that the brand's impact on the streetwear community persists decades after its establishment. They set a new standard on how jeans were made and what's considered quality when talking denim. They were huge in the early to mid 2000s, but they took a bit of a hiatus as of late. For a number of years, Ivizu seems to have disappeared as other brands have taken the spotlight that they once had. And why is that? Let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the rise and fall and rise again of Ivisu jeans. But before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button. Liking and sharing the video is the only way to get the YouTube algorithm to notice us and the best way to help us to continue to grow. But with that being said, let's jump right in. Ivisu was founded in 1991 by Hidehiko Yamane. Yamane worked in one of Osaka's most popular stores, Lampin, famous for being one of Levi's Deadstock's biggest importers, which were huge in Japan at the time. But before I can go into the story of Yamane or Ivizu, I have to touch on the Japanese obsession with American denim. It all started, more or less, with James Dean. The almost obsessive fascination of young Japanese for American aesthetics coincides roughly with the release of Rebel Without a Cause. In 1955, a movie in where Dean wears a pair of blue jeans and a white t-shirt. It was in the post-war period that Amitora developed, which translates to American casual, a new subculture that arises from the Japanese's attraction to American denim. And despite the widespread success in the 70s, the quality of American denim decreased as the demand increased. Several Japanese designers grew tired of the low-grade materials and sought the revised denim the Japanese way. Hand-dyed processes, vintage machines, and labor-intensive weaving methods that centuries old. Let's take a sidebar for a second and discuss Kaizen. Kaizen is a Japanese term that roughly translates to change for the better or continuous improvement. Its concepts refers to business activities that continuously improve all functions and involve all employees from the CEO right on down to the assembly line workers. The concept of Kaizen was taken into the creation of Ivisu, but before establishing his label, Yamane spent some time researching vintage denim and went on a quest to create the perfect pair of raw, durable jeans. The word Ivisu is a nod to the Japanese god of prosperity whose name is Ibisu and who is often seen holding a fishing rod. Yamane carefully chose the name in appreciation to his two favorite things, fishing and money. Although it wasn't his first option. Originally, he wanted to go with the word Evis for some reason, but if you play word games, then you can see how close this is to Levi's, just minus the L. And apparently the guys at Levi's also noticed and took issue with it. After a bit of legal sparring, Yamane decided to add the U and go with the name Evisu. In the beginning, Evisu only produced 14 pairs of jeans a day out of their Osaka workshop. The weaving looms used to make them hadn't been in operation for over 40 years at the time. But those machines played a significant role in creating the vintage style denim that Yamane was looking for. Each pair of Ivisu jeans went through a time consuming process. The vintage loop machine would feed rope of cotton yarn through tubes of rich indigo dye and back out and all the way up to the factory's roof where the color would oxidize. This process was repeated as much as 30 times, which made the production extremely slow and is also why the jeans were so expensive. When Ivisu first launched, Yamane would take a hand brush and white paint and hand draw the M's on the back of the pockets himself, which were meant to resemble seagulls, a nod to the founder's love for fishing. Seven years after launching his first store in Osaka, Yamane introduced a ladies line called Ivisu Donna. And shortly after, in the early 2000s, Yamane had aspirations to take things up a notch. So he tapped Peter Kaplow, a Hong Kong-based entrepreneur. Kaplow, who later launched a fashion trade show in Asia called The Hub, helped distribute Yamane's jeans to the fashion forward in London and New York and all around the world. This was the beginning of Ivizu's mainstream success, which was the first for a Japanese denim brand. 
In the early 2000s, Ivisu had already become a cult favorite and what could be looked at as the dawn of streetwear. They began to gain the attention of rappers of the day, such as Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Jeezy, and the like. And they even got a cameo in the Hype Williams movie, Belly. Ivizu represented a quote-unquote luxury product, at a time when the contamination between high fashion and streetwear was still far from becoming a reality. By the time the now OG streetwear brands were beginning to conquer their important slice of the market, all your Supremes, Bapes, and Stussies of the world, Ivizu was already heavy rolling. They had stores in Japan and London, but despite the popularity they had here in the US, they never opened the store stateside. Rumors were that they had plans to open a shop in the Soho district of Manhattan, right near Bape, but the subsequent subprime mortgage crisis erased any ideas before they could even really get off the ground. Ivizu had been booming for a while at this time, and it had reached a peak and the time for a pullback had suddenly walked in the door and presented itself. The huge commercial success led the brand to launch an entire line of apparel. Also, the popularity of the brand in Asia led them to opening a considerable amount of stores in China, where part of the production would later be moved. It's not really considered Japanese denim if it's made in China, right? Many customers would be turned off by the concept not to mention a proliferation of fakes began to flood the market. This was also around the same time that brands like Bape and Billionaire Boys Club were coming into form and making denim of their own. They had slid right in and took many of the customers that previously likely would have been into Ivisu. It also didn't help that, as I said, they never opened a store in the US, so getting your hands on an authentic pair was pretty difficult. The only places you could really buy them from was the Ivisu website or places like eBay, which often had fakes listed right next to the real pairs for dramatically cheaper prices. Not to mention that even if you ordered it from the official international website, you still weren't getting genuine Japanese raw denim. Not unless you were willing to pay over $600 and buy them from the Japanese site. Otherwise, you were getting the ones made in China. Due to all these issues, American customers began to lose interest in Ivisu. But the brand wouldn't die though. They were still huge in Europe, Japan, China, and Hong Kong. In fact, they have over 60 stores in China, more than in their home country of Japan. Over the years, they've made a comeback to the States thanks to rappers like Travis Scott, Lil Uzi Vert, and Amigos, but nothing like what they were back in the past. It's hard to really say that Ivizu fell off though because of all the success that they've had in Asia. I think that as Americans, we sometimes think that if something's not popping stateside, then it's not popping, totally forgetting that there's a whole world out there. So from Ivizu's standpoint, I'm sure they don't really care if they're no longer as big here in the States, so long as they keep raking in that sweet, sweet China cash. Besides. If they did, you would think that they would have made another push to try to break into the market, but nonetheless, they haven't. Today, here in the US, Ivizu is looked at as an uber unicorn brand that you have to have real connections or deep pockets to get in your collection. But with that being said though, they still make some nice pieces, and nothing beats a nice pair of Japanese denim, even if it will cost you 700 bucks. But what do you think? Were you a fan of Ivizu? Would you still wear the stuff today? Hit us in the comment section and let us know. Also, if you haven't already, then hit that like button. Liking and sharing the video is the best way to help us to continue to grow as a channel, and we can't do it without you guys' help. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new episode like this, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be dinged whenever a new video drops. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, signing out. Until next time, peace.